Welcome to the Paper Talk podcast, where we have candid conversations with emerging artists and industry leaders about all things paper flowers. Through this podcast, we hope to continue to share knowledge, connect all of us together, and elevate the artistry of each and every one of us. Hello, I'm Quinn Wen. I'm Jesse Chu. I'm Priscilla Park. Our mission is to share, connect, and elevate the paper floral industry. We are some of the voices behind the Paper Floors Collective. Welcome to our podcast, Paper Talk. As always, we love to hear your comments and takes on the podcast. One listener at Table Takes on Instagram had to say, I listened to all the first episodes and I liked it a lot. You have such a great tone in between you and I love all the laughter. One thing I really appreciate with podcasts is how it makes me pause and think while listening. Literally pause the podcast to think through before continuing listening and yours delivered. Thank you so much at Table Take and we look forward to hearing what you have to say about the Paper Talk podcast. You're listening to episode six of Paper Talk, and today Quinn, Jesse, and myself are going to be discussing a hot topic over coffee. Quinn, do you want to get us started? This is something I feel like it's happened to all of us. It probably has happened to you. This is something that happens when you post one of your photos on Instagram or a social media platform, and then someone just goes by and just copies it, just takes a screenshot. They'll repost it and they'll claim it as theirs. The thing we want to talk about is the etiquette of how to handle if something like this happens to you. I'm going to point it over to Jesse because this happened, like they pretty much created an account and they took all her photos and posted like several photos all in a row from her photos. It was ridiculous. And I hate to say this, but Instagram did not do a very good job handling the situation. But several of our community members had actually found it and reported it and told Jesse, and we were all rallying around her, figure out how to figure this situation. So Jesse, tell us about the story and how, what happened? Honestly, it was horrific. It's like, I never imagined somebody would do this. And I don't know if there was a program that actually does this. I suspect there is because everything was exactly the same. And like you said, they posted a couple, a handful of photos that were directly from my account. The profile photo was mine. The description of the profile was mine. Like everything was exactly the same except for the, the handle. It was something really odd. The handle was different. I think it was Amity who messaged me and was like, this looks really odd. And this, this looks like your account, but it's not. Once she drew my attention to it, I went to it and I was like, oh my God, this is like identity theft in, you know, on social media, on Instagram. So I never thought that would happen to me, but it was so scary. So what essentially happened was um, I reached out to Instagram. So this was a couple of months ago. I think some of you guys might have seen it on my stories because I was livid in terms of the response of Instagram. A couple of ways that you can complain on Instagram, but you have to go through like link after link after link. They do not make it easy for you to report anything. Which is pretty ridiculous considering how many uh, accounts and photos are probably copied again and again by people all around the world, across the world, who think that, you know, the social media world is really small, but it's not. So we're lucky in our community that not just Amity, but some other individuals also pointed out that this was a fake account. So with the help of the community, really, with the help of, with like tons of other people, all reporting on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was able to shut down the account because just my complaint alone apparently wasn't enough. Instagram, so once you, I don't even remember what links I had to click, but I had to report a violation or infringement of Instagram policy. And then you have to explain why, but they don't give you much, you know, options. Uh, you know, you click yes or no, and then you submit it, and then you wait. Like, they don't send an email saying, oh, confirmed, we received anything, you have to wait. And so I think I waited, uh, I waited a day, I think a day or so. And they sent back an email saying, oh, we received your infringement complaint, but according to the policies, it, nothing's been violated. So their policy, their policy has not been violated by this account. Which is so ridiculous yeah. because they really? stole your, your headshot photo. They stole everything about your profile Plus, they stole several of your posts, which had your picture, plus all the text. That well, yes. <laughs> so actually, the reason why Amity found it was because they copied the text on the, the comments on the post, which had hashtags. And one of the hashtags was Amity's, you know, was it pick, 
not, yeah, not paper. And she was going through that and she saw one of my posts pop up as a recent one. And she's like, well, didn't she post that a while ago? And so when she checked, then she saw it was a fake account. So honestly, like these people who steal your account, they really like, I don't know what the purpose of it is. Yeah, what are they they're copying the exact same okay. thing. And even the website is to my website. Like, I don't see how that would benefit them. Hey, <laughs> it should be to their website, right? Yeah. So, I mean, after Instagram got back to me and said, oh no, you know, that account didn't violate any of our policies. I was livid. I'm like, what more do you need? So I posted <laughs> it in my stories and all of you guys were like, what the F? Yeah, you guys just kept on um, reporting it. And then subsequently, Instagram finally said, actually, no, Instagram didn't say anything to me. What happened was finally we checked the account and we couldn't find it anymore. But Instagram never said we shut down the account. So I don't even know if the reason for them for shutting it down is because there was sufficient complaints from like so many people, you know, actually confirming to them that that's not a real account. It's a fake account. Or it was just they decided to shut it down. I have no idea. But I mean, the moral of that story is, well, there's a couple morals. Uh, one being that Instagram is terrible at uh, regulating um, these accounts, fake or otherwise, or just whatever content is within these accounts. And two, I think, you know, there's strength in numbers. You know, our community is so, so good at backing up each other, coming together and saying, no, this is wrong and this is right. And I'm so thankful to have that community that is will like who are willing to speak up for me, you know, because if you guys didn't, I'm sure it would have taken forever for that account, if ever, to be shut down. And that's just, you know, that's just wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was my big story with, you know, with yeah. crediting. I mean, that wasn't even crediting. Like it was yep. just... And then another situation happened where there was another account in another country and they actually stole, I think, Margie photo. They stole one of my photos. I think they stole one of your photos. Mm. And it was just so- Everyone's weird. photo. Yeah. And they just claimed it as theirs. And luckily one of our paper floors community member saw it and reported, you know, told us about it, like DM'd us, uh, let us know that this account actually had one of our photos and they were claiming it as theirs. Like for me, when someone shares a photo for my thing, as long as you just tag me and say, hey, this photo was taken by Pink and Posey, I'm totally fine with that. You don't have to ask permission from me, but when you blatantly claim it as yours, when it's really is not, that's where the line is drawn and you have to take action. And this is where you can take the case and report it to Instagram or Facebook, wherever that photo is being broadcast and saying it's theirs. And the thing is, even though you do report by yourself, it does really matter when a lot of people say, hey, this photo is not theirs. So one thing that we recommend doing is we do have a Facebook group and we have like the community is behind everybody here. So if you will just message the group, the Facebook page of the admins for the paper floors, let us know. We will rally up a group of people and we will totally help your cause and make sure that they take down that photo and take off that message saying that it's theirs. Because in reality, it is not theirs. And we work so hard and so long in creating our, our image, our reputation. And for someone just to blatantly just take it, it's just a no-no. Yeah. And another thing, some people, I don't know how this happens, but some people don't realize that it's wrong to take somebody's picture and say, I can make something like this for you. They think, well, but I'm not saying it's mine. I just said I could make it for you. I've had people say, oh, I saw somebody's using your picture and they said I could make this for you, something like this. And that's not, they're like, and I've had people ask me, they're like, well, do you, I mean, that's not okay, right? Is it? No, it's not right. I'm like, no, that's not right at all. As long as it's not your picture. Yeah, it's not your workshop profile or whatever. If it's not yours, if you didn't take the picture, you don't have permission to use it, don't do it. Yeah, just, you know, if you have any doubt, don't do it. First of all, it's, it's just wrong and it's just impolite and you need to ask permission from the owner of the photo if you can use it. And then there's guidelines on how to go navigate through that path. And the thing is, make your own. If you're willing to sell something, you should be showcasing what you can do versus saying, oh, I could do that too. So what if the client does come to you and say, I want the exact thing that you just posted and you cannot 
produce that same thing. You're going to disappoint your client. The client's going to bad mouth you and it's just going to backfire on you. So just don't do it. So if you do see a post, say you're going through your feed and you see a post and it's Quinn's image, but it's on someone else's feed, what do you do? Well, I think you should take post first, right? Take a look at the post, read it. If it's been tagged on it and it says something complimentary, then great, you know, leave a comment. Say like, yeah, I love her work, you know? And if you're in doubt that Quinn even knows or doesn't know it exists, DM her. If the post says, does not mention Quinn, does not tag Quinn, usually those posts don't mention or don't compliment the actual person or artist who made the post or made the, the paper flower. Um, in that case, I would suggest that you do reach out to the person who you believe actually made flower or took the photo. Just DM them, put that post on their radar so that they can, if they choose to, also approach the poster. Don't feel that you're obligated to leave a comment. That said, usually when I see something like that, I will leave a comment to let that poster know that they should be crediting someone for that post. Obviously leave a nice message because you kind of want to err on the side of caution. Maybe they forgot, maybe they were doing too many hashtags and none of their comments showed up. Who knows? But leave a nice message saying, oh yeah, you know, I love Quinn's work and tag Quinn. And that way you're not necessarily confronting them on perhaps your own mistake, but at least Quinn will be tagged. She'll know other people who read the post know who the actual author is as well. Now, there are cases where the poster will not respond to either you or to the artist who actually posted and said, hey, do you mind tagging me? In those cases, you may have to elevate the situation a little bit. If you feel that it's appropriate, you can let Instagram know that there may be a copyright infringement, put it in the ball in their court. But I think what's also very effective is, you know, sharing that post with the community as well and saying to them, look, can you tell this person, you know, I not shaming, okay, because I don't, I don't approve of shaming, but to let the poster know that they should be crediting Quinn and sharing your stories and say, oh, Quinn's post or Quinn's paper flowers are on this post. It's beautiful just to make sure everyone knows that this these flowers were made by Quinn as opposed to a poster who you know may or may not have meant to imposter him yeah um, and, and then another thing I want to point out is that if you find your photo on another person's account you can either put do the same thing to say hey thanks for sharing my work with everybody or if you don't want to do that you can always dm them and just say, hey, I noticed that you one of my work. Will you do you mind tagging me on? And just be very polite because sometimes they're not thinking about it. They didn't know. Give them the reasonable doubt first before you take action. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just kind of being, you know, having good etiquette, right? Even if they don't have good social media etiquette, if you do, I think that changes the dialogue, right? Yeah, exactly. And if you want to share anybody's work, ask the person who owns the photo. Say, hey, I would love to share your photo on my feed. And they'll either say yes or no. And they say yes. And they'll say, make sure you t use this tag or this hashtag. So just be polite, nice about it. And you'll get a lot of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, most people love people, other people sharing their work. Right. Yeah, so it's just taking that extra step, that courtesy step of just asking if you're not sure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you guys have any issues that you want us to bring up and talk about, leave a comment below or message us and let us know. And we'll add another one of your topics that you want to talk about in, in the future. Yeah. Make sure you check out the show notes on Paper Talk blog for links and references of topics we talked about today. Thank you so much for listening to our show and be sure to join us next week for another episode of Paper Talk.